Well, welcome back. I'm George. And as always, it's good to be with you. We really appreciate the community. So for all you distillers, hobbyists, brewers, whatever the case may be, thanks for tuning in. Of course, subscribe, share with your friends, and comment below. Love it. We answer all the comments. Now, today's topic is methanol. Uh, it, what I hope to do today is to share with you some facts. We're going to try to allay some fears and at the same time provide you with some valuable information. How's that? So let's get on with our topic. Now I get calls all the time about this. Uh, I get comments all the time about this. Uh, it, uh, of course I respond to them and have these discussions um, and I'm starting to see a trend and that is a clear misunderstanding of uh, the elusive methanol. Now, here's what we do know. Oh, uh, methanol. You know, every time I get the whiteboard out, this time we're not going to do any math. Methanol, known as wood alcohol, methyl, methane, but it's, it's called a lot of different things. Now, uh, our purpose in distilling is to not collect any methanol because we know that methanol is not good to drink, nor is it healthy, it's toxic. So there you have one part of it is true, it is toxic. Now we're always looking for the ethanol, and ethanol is not toxic. Oh, it all depends on what your wife thinks about when you have a couple of those. Um, the, the toxicity of methanol is fairly severe, but you've got to ingest quite a bit of it. And uh, that would be like four or five ounces of pure ethanol, uh, methanol, uh, and it could have an effect on your optic nerve. Uh, it, uh, it, it really attacks the central nervous system and could potentially in high doses kill you. Yes. Now, but let's break this down and have, let's, let's understand why and where the fears and the folklore of methanol came aboard in our history. Simple, December 5th, 1933. We all know what that day was. Yep, that's when they repealed prohibition. Now, the purpose of repealing prohibition, one of the things that instigated that was the unscrupulous habit of some unscrupulous moonshiners and bootleggers uh, were adding methanol to some of the ethanol that they had in order to create more of a volume uh, and therefore they, they were, for a while there, they were unintentionally poisoning people. Uh, this actually came about in uh, January when, it, and this is what really tripped it, uh, January a doctor had reported that he had several, oh, what was it, 30, 40 uh, cases of methanol poisoning, and, and the root of all of that was, was illegal illicit spirits, moonshine, uh, because it was still at that time illegal. Now, uh, have you ever thought, you say, you know, if I'm only making, now remember this, this is, on average, fruits, a fruit mash will produce more methanol than a sugar mash. A fruit mash will also provide, now this is in the order of, I guess, importance or production, fruit mash makes the most, okay? A grain mash can also produce some methanol, but not as much as a fruit mash. And a sugar, well, sometimes called a wash, sugar wash, sugar mash, uh, produces very little and in some cases none. So um, it begs to reason that we need to understand a little bit more about methanol and methanol production. Now, Back to my question I was going to ask. If by chance we know that as a rule of thumb, we always toss out the first, what is it? 
yeah, two ounces. Yeah, the first two ounces. Oh, there we go. I'll spell it right one day. Of uh, our run is methanol. It's, it's our four shots, and that happens. Gosh, I need to get something to erase with so that I can just keep this thing going. Give me a second. There we go. Okay, the first two ounces, somewhere in that neighborhood, uh, that's our safety margin. We, we always just, a rule of thumb is, look, it, and it doesn't matter if you're making sugar, grain, fruits, uh, redistilling wines, um, or distilling a beer, uh, doesn't make much sense, but you could distill beer and get some alcohol out of that. Uh, no matter what you're doing, um, the rule of thumb in a very, very good practice is just toss the first two ounces and then use the flame test. I'll explain more about that. Now, we go back to this and in that first two ounces, the four shots, that happens because we know that 145 degrees Fahrenheit uh, is the vaporization point of methanol. And that would be actually 67.7 degrees Celsius. All right, that's if you're working with that scale. Um, we know that the vaporization point, now we're talking about sea level, the vaporization point of ethanol is 172-ish, depending on what literature you read. Um, 172 is a really good figure. It's, ah, gosh, I don't know why it is, because you'll read some say 172.3, some say 174.1, some say 172.8, or, well, yeah, it's, it's around there. So, 172. Now, that equates to 70, 70 degrees Celsius. So, here's what we know for sure. We know for sure that in the beginning of a run, there's no way that you can get to 172 while you're heating up your still and not go through 145. So what's that tell us? It tells us that methanol must come off first. Okay, now once it's gone, it's gone. You not, you're not gonna recreate it. So if you do a run and you're gonna do a separate run, you, you don't have to worry about pulling off methanol in the second run because there is none. It's not there, it's already gone. You've got rid of it. Okay, so what we'll do is, I like to stop the still around one, shoot, about 160 or so, you know, maybe 150, 160, 165, whatever makes you happy. Stop your still's temperature a little bit above 145, but low enough below 172 that you're not producing any ethanol. And the only thing that'll come out is a little bit of water because it's attached to the methanol and the methanol. Some other side elements will show up too, but so for the first two ounces, boom, you're gone. Bob's your uncle. It's done. Winter, winter, chicken dinner. You got it. Okay? It's that simple. Uh, if you desire and you want to, you can do a flame test. Take a spoon, put a couple of drops in there, and light it. Now, focus your attention on the flame. If the flame in here is yellow, I don't have a yellow marker. If the flame in here is yellow, it is methanol. If the flame in here is transparent and or blue, it's ethanol. Those are the two differences. They burn differently. Um, oh, by the way, if you had lead in there, it would burn red. You, you, you'd see that. You, now, in all cases, a flame in the atmosphere picks up other substances in our atmosphere, so you may get some yellow up here at the very tip. Don't worry about that. That, that is the flame inter, being interfered with by the atmosphere. We're focused on this, the huge portion of the flame. So, uh, I'd advise be very, very careful because it can burn invisible. Um, I've seen this happen where they take a spoon, light it, check it, say, great, dump it in the sink, and then reach into the sink to grab the spoon and singe all the hair off his arm. I've seen a guy do that. Uh, 
this stuff can, it, it'll burn, it, it, it burns fast, but it, it'll burn. Okay, so if it burns yellow, it's what? You're right, methanol. If it burns blue or transparent, it's, yep, ethanol, gotcha. All right, now follow this. If we're only making or producing through our fermentation process, now there is some methanol that is resident in our environment, but if we're producing it through the fermentation process, and in a five gallon batch, we're only making about two ounces of it. Well, how do you think, you know, when they say, well, where were they getting methanol from to produce, at such a large level produced to add to ethanol, which of course you got more of, in order to make it poisonous. Well, methanol can be created chemically in another way. So, and of course it's created, it's like, gosh, 70 tons of it or millions of gallons of it is created for a lot of different uses, a lot of industrial uses. It's also used, it was used during prohibition to denature alcohol. And to denature an alcohol is to take ethanol, add methanol to it, to make it unfit to consume. So what it did was it stretched the methanol for industrial use. You follow me now? Unscrupulous people used the methanol to stretch the ethanol for profitable gain. Now we no longer have that issue, okay? There, there should not be that issue out there any longer since prohibition was repealed. But as a home distiller, we need to be a little bit more concerned about it. How concerned should we be? Well, let's answer that question. I'm not sure if you realized or not, but in a half a gallon of apple cider, you naturally have more methanol than you'll produce in a five gallon batch. Make you wonder if you drank a, look, you know methanol is the stuff that gives you the headache too. So if you drank a whole half a gallon of apple cider, you're gonna have one heck of a headache. Uh, you probably won't be, you know, no, you won't be drunk, but you're gonna have one heck of a headache when you get all done with that. And I don't know many people that drink all of that, but that's the point. So think of this also. When we make a beer, or if we make a wine, or we make a mash, what is different of those three processes? Besides ingredients, and level of the amount of ingredients. Well, the answer to that is nothing. Absolutely nothing. You're gonna ferment exactly the same way. If you're making a beer, let's say you're making a beer, and normally the alcohol by volume in a beer is upwards to about Six mm, percent is probably now. Yeah, I know you'll find some out there that are eight, nine, and ten. Uh, those are specialty beers. But on average, beers run anywhere between. Oh gosh, I know. As a matter of fact, here in Texas, if it's more than uh, three uh, percent uh, alcohol by volume, it's got to be called an ale. So you won't see beer on the label. Um, so don't leave that. Between three and six percent alcohol by volume uh, is where you'll find your beer category. Uh, and that's because of the yeast we use. It's cultured for that. Now, when we go to wine, wines, I, there are wines out there that are 14% uh, alcohol by volume. And guess what? Wines are made out of fruits. Remember what we said? Fruits produce the most methanol. Okay. Huh. Now, some of our mashes, I always shoot for 12 to 14% ABV because it's a lot, easily, a lot easier to manage. Uh, so you'll see the amount of methanol produced in that is right around two ounces or so. Um, but I always do the flame test, the surefire method. But all three of those processes are exactly the same. Now here's what's different, is what do you do with the liquid that you've fermented when you're ready to produce your product? Well with beer, we clarify it we may hop it, we may do a bunch of other different things to it, then we bottle it and put it aside. With wine, we clear it, we may finish it, finalize it, we do anything we want to with it, we bottle it and we set it aside. 
With a mash, we clear it, and then we put it in a still. And then we separate all of those components. We separate the methanol, and we separate the ethanol. That's why drinking a very, very fine moonshine made by someone who is very good at the practice will never give you a headache because it has no methanol in it. Whereas the wine, you've left the methanol in there. Now, the amount that you're consuming is a lot less because hopefully you're not drinking all that wine. And the same thing with the beer. So it is perfectly acceptable to consume the minor amount of methanol if it's in a beer, if it's in a wine. And believe it or not, if I'll go out on a limb on this, I don't advise it, but I'll go out on a limb and I'll tell you that if you never separated the methanol from a moonshine, you're not gonna go blind, period. Unless you separate that methanol and you ingest all of it at one time. Now, there are people, uh, some of you may have had this experience, you get a cheap bottle of bourbon, gives you one heck of a headache. Kind of makes you wonder, doesn't it? On the, in the grand scheme of things, on the industrial level, are they or are they not removing the four shots? I'm kind of suspicious. Some would wonder because in those four shots is also a lot of those conagers and flavors that folks are looking for. Um, but we're just smarter than that because we separate the methanol and then we start to focus on the flavoring in those lovely hots. And of course, we, I cut it off the tails. I cut off at 204, 204 degrees, and 100 proof. I just, to me, there's no sense in me collecting any more than that because I am not going to consume it, and I got better things to do. So, and it's totally up to you. It's a personal choice. So there you have it in a nutshell. That's, uh, that's what I wanted to share with you today. So please understand that methanol is toxic. Methanol can be dangerous. But if you look at it across the whole spectrum, it's perfectly acceptable. You are consuming methanol when you drink a beer. You're consuming methanol when you drink wine. You're consuming methanol when you drink apple cider and a lot of other food products. Uh, but we get so wrapped around the axle when we start to distill. Oh, gosh, just throw out the first two ounces. Uh, I've had people tell me that they've actually thrown out a quart. I, I'm just, you know, I, good job, you threw out a quart, but you didn't have to throw that much away. Look, you know how it is. Until next time, happy to still it.